hi everyone and thanks for watching today's video please remember to like subscribe and click the notification sign to get my all latest uploads so today i'm going to talk about a very common condition i'm sure all of you have heard about it maybe in your family people have gone through it as well it's called condition called appendicitis or some people call it acute appendicitis which means which happens very quickly and affects us very very urgently and require urgent treatment so uh, first of all just to explain the anatomy briefly i've just drawn this diagram over here so this is the bottom of our rib cage that is the belly button or the umbilicus that those are our hip bones so down here is the pelvis and um, so you can feel these bones on yourself on the right side of our tummy from coming from under the rib cage down to the bottom is our large colon or the, uh, the large intestine coming down this is called the ascending colon and it comes to the first part of our large intestine which is like a sac here called the cecum and this small intestine which is the ileum opens into this part of our colon so all the food etc whatever is left after absorption comes into this part of the colon to become poo um, and that opens this part of the cecum as well and at the bottom of the cecum is sticking out this little tube like structure which i drawn in red that is the appendix so appendix is on the right side of our tummy one third the way between our edge of the hip bone on the right to our belly button so if you draw a line across here it is across round about here so you can see just down there now how big is the appendix appendix is about two inches long uh, most of them anyway but some of them can be much longer i've seen which are two inches long some of them are maybe six or eight inches long so it can be something smaller to a bit bigger now what is the purpose of appendix in human body Honestly, I don't think there is any purpose of appendix in a human body, but there are different theories that it can store good bacteria and when the, our intestine loses the good bacteria, they can regrow grow out of the appendix. Maybe it's true, maybe it's not. I, again, I don't know. I don't think there's any scientific evidence to prove it. Um, but nevertheless, important thing is, if somebody has to have their appendix removed, they do not come to any harm by having no appendix in their body. So second thing to understand is what causes appendicitis. So I have drawn on the side here um, the same thing, uh, slightly bigger, so you can see it a bit easier. So that is our ascending colon coming down, small intestine opening like it is opening over here. And I've drawn this uh, long tube-like appendix, looks like a worm, a round worm. Now, the theory behind developing appendicitis is where the hole in the appendix is because like a tube, the hole in the tube gets blocked. Now it might be a piece of poo which blocks it. It might be infection which causes lymph glands to swell over here and block the hole. It could be uh, something else like a growth, like a polyp or something in the bowel which can block it or even a tumor of the colon can block this. When it gets blocked, the all the secretions from the appendix can't escape easily and they collect in the appendix. Appendix keeps getting congested and swollen. And when it gets swollen, it gets bacteria in it and bacteria causes infection and inflammation, which is called acute appendicitis. So the second thing is what uh, do we feel when we develop appendicitis uh, or in other words, what are the symptoms of appendicitis? And I've written some over here like pain, fever and tiredness. Obviously, somebody is unwell, they'll feel tired. So the main symptoms are pain and fever. Now, where is the pain? Pain of appendicitis typically starts around the belly button. Yeah. And uh, you might think it's a bit strange. Uh, why does it start around the belly button? It's to do with the nerve supply to the appendix because the nerve supply to the belly button is the same nerve supply or level of nerve supply as that of the appendix. So when it first gets inflamed, you start getting pain around the belly button. And then after a few hours, maybe 10, 12 hours, the pain starts shifting towards where they actually the appendix is. So it starts moving on the right side of the tummy, below the belly button and to the right of the belly button. So the pain settles over here. So any movement because it shakes the appendix hurts the patient. So the patient wants to lie down, they feel very tired, they get fever because it's an infection. Typically fever is not very, very high. It's a low grade fever. Um, 
because of the infection in the tummy this might start getting vomiting they start getting diarrhea sometimes sometimes the bowels don't work so those sort of, sort of symptoms can happen with appendicitis if at this stage the appendix is not treated in whatever way they want to treat it is not treated then the appendix can burst and this typically happens after day 3 of developing the symptoms can happen a bit early obviously and can happen a bit later sometimes might not happen but at that stage the appendix can burst when the appendix burst all the pus and infection from inside the appendix spreads throughout the tummy when it spreads throughout the tummy then um that is called peritonitis and as we have discussed before and i'm sure you most of you know that peritonitis is a very serious infection of the tummy makes the patient very very sick the patient does not want to move they don't want to cough they don't want to walk around because every movement hurts their tummy very badly and at this stage it's a serious condition and the patient will require an emergency operation to make them better so what age people are affected by appendicitis it can happen both in males and females but the uh, uh, commonest age uh, is young people so children and teenagers are the commonest people affected by appendicitis but please remember appendicitis can happen in any age uh, from very young to very very old so what are the complications of appendicitis uh, one complication we have already discussed which is the burst appendix so appendix burst and all the pus comes out and patients get peritonitis obviously a very serious infection serious condition uh, normally requires an emergency operation the second condition is called appendicular mass uh, perhaps not a complication but more the way sometimes appendix can present so when patient get infection of the appendix they uh, get inflammation of the appendix around the appendix and what happens that because of the inflammation around the appendix the body tries and protect our ourselves from this infection so what it does all the small intestine around this area and the fat that is in our tummy over here goes and grabs the appendix and wraps around it like this so appendix is in the middle where the infection is and our body uh, fat inside the tummy called the omentum and the small intestine goes and wraps around it like this the reason for doing that is our body is trying to protect ourselves from spreading of the infection and this is called an appendix mass the reason is because because the wrapping around you can see there is a lump and when the patient comes into the hospital they are surprising me not very poorly because the body is trying to protect them and uh, when the surgeon feels the tummy they can feel this lump underneath the skin or inside the muscle of the tummy you can't feel the mass then a scan will pick up the mass so what are the conditions that can look like appendicitis one of it is a violent infection of the throat especially in little children they become very fluy and their tonsils get swollen similarly the glands around the appendix get swollen and those glands become very very tender also the appendix is not inflamed but those glands are inflamed and these patients usually settle down with rest and uh, with time they tend to settle down uh, crohn's disease because this part of the small intestine is inflamed and sometimes the colon can be inflamed uh, as well it can look like appendicitis especially if crohn's presents very urgently as an emergency then it can feel like appendicitis diverticulitis meckel's diverticulitis now all these uh, a condition might sound a bit strange to you however i'll be talking about them in my in my future videos so just wait for next 2 3 videos and you will know all about them gallstone disease again i'll talk about in the future gallbladder sits around here so it's very close to the appendix sometimes looks like appendicitis pelvic inf infection in the pelvis so any infection down here in the pelvis especially in ladies it can look like appendicitis although appendix is normal a topic pregnancy in which the pregnancy has taken place not in the right place but in the tube and when the tube burst uh, then appendix can look inflamed that's why any female who is admitted with appendicitis who is of a child bearing age uh, surgeons will always almost always do a pregnancy test make sure they're not pregnant before they remove uh, the appendix because sometimes ectopic pregnancy can give rise to a condition which looks like appendicitis now 
Saying all this, there are many tests available now, scans, etc., etc. But if after all those tests, they're still in doubt whether it is appendicitis or not, it is perhaps they will consider removing a normal appendix rather than leaving an inflamed appendix in there, which can burst and cause peritonitis. So many patients will require appendix to be removed when it's normal, but that is a safer thing to do than leaving an inflamed appendix in there for too long. So what are the few tests available to diagnose appendicitis? The most important thing is good examination. Most surgeons will do a very good examination in nine out of 10 patients. They can tell just by examination, patient has got appendicitis or not. They obviously also do blood tests to make sure there is no infection in the blood. If the infection levels are very high, it again points towards appendicitis. Urine tests to make sure there is no urine infection because sometimes urine infection can look like appendicitis. Again, as we discussed before, ladies of childbearing age will have a pregnancy test to make sure it's not an ectopic pregnancy, which is looking like appendicitis. Now these days, uh, out of hour scans are freely available. So, you know, in the middle of the night, uh, patients can undergo a CT scan, ultrasound scan, which obviously show whether they have got appendicitis or not. Even they will show there is some other problem uh, with the tummy, like uh, gallstones or Crohn's disease or pelvic inflammatory disease or uh, some other problem that might be looking like appendicitis. Uh, laparoscopy, uh, if still in doubt, Laparoscopy is a keyhole operation in which, uh, under general anesthetic, the surgeon makes a little cut on the tummy and one or two other tiny little cuts, they're only very, very small cuts. They put instruments in, in the camera in, and look at the appendix, whether it is inflamed or not inflamed. Now, lastly, what is the treatment for appendicitis? Um, now, uh, most surgeons will accept that surgery is the main treatment for appendicitis. Uh, appendicitis is confirmed or if in doubt of whether it is appendicitis or not appendicitis and all the tests being done and still uh, the surgeons cannot be sure whether it's appendicitis then it is safer to remove an appendix than to leave an inflamed appendix in there. So maybe 10% patients these days may be a bit less because the scans available um, will have the appendix removed even if it's normal and that is not a wrong thing to do because it is safer to remove a normal appendix and leave an inflamed appendix in there. Now um, can it be treated with antibiotics? I think very very early appendicitis can be treated with antibiotics and it will tend to settle down but many of these patients probably will come back with a repeat attack of appendicitis. The only patients which uh, in my practice, I used to treat with antibiotics were the one who used to come in with appendicular mass. Now, you might remember the appendix was wrapped around by a small intestine and also by the uh, fat inside our tummy called the omentum. Now, they were trying to stop the infection spreading around and the patient starts feeling better when this happens. If the clinical examination or the scans show there is an appendix mass, which means the nature is trying to do the job, then it was best at the time to leave alone the appendix, give it a course of antibiotics, maybe for a week to control the infection around that area and leave it alone. And I used to leave it alone for about three odd months and then used to go in after three months when the patient was well and there was no problem uh, with them with infection, etc. Then I used to do with a keyhole. So you make a cut around the belly button, two other tiny little cuts and put a camera in and find the appendix which is not inflamed anymore and remove it surgically which has got far less complication rates when actually when it actually is inflamed. Now surgery even if there is no mass present then obviously uh, I still believe the surgery is the best option for those patients and can be done with a keyhole uh, as an emergency and is a very straightforward operation in most cases. However, sometimes the appendix can be very difficult to remove and can require lots of technical challenge to remove the appendix. Um, old fashioned surgery, like uh, making a cut on the side of the tummy over here called McBurney's incision and through that cut, go in and remove the appendix. If however, the appendix has burst and there is pus all over the tummy called peritonitis, then perhaps keyhole is a bit easier because with the keyhole you can wash everywhere because you can look around everywhere. 
put lots of saline inside and with antibiotics if necessary and wash it out completely or um, if that is not possible those facilities are not available etc whatever the reason then a cut in the middle of the tummy would be necessary to wash everything out and remove the appendix because sometimes the surgeons are not sure whether uh, what is causing the peritonitis is the appendix or some of the problems and cut in the middle of the tummy through which every other organ can be seen and, and looked at. So I do hope you enjoyed this video and gave you a bit more understanding about acute appendicitis, etc. And I look forward to seeing you very soon. Um, take care and see you soon.